So now, now comes the part of our program uh, where I have to admit to you, I have no idea what's going to happen next. Uh, but I am going to invite my friends Gary and Brad up. Uh, they work for a company called On Your Feet. Uh, we've asked them to come help you think differently. Uh, what I do know is that they've worked for companies like Intel and Disney and Nike, uh, not just here in the state and in the region, but internationally. And I'm frankly uh, guessing that this might be a little uh, more uh, lively part of the conversation, and so anxious to see, uh, see what you have in store for us. So, Brad and Gary, welcome. Thank you. Pat. Hi, buddy. Thank you. We, um, we know that this afternoon you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and really do some, some serious work together. And what we've been asked to do is come up here uh, just for a brief period of time and to share with you some tips from a bit of a different world. The world that we live in is the world of improvisation. And in improvisation, you get groups of people uh, who have to work together uh, without a script or a plan, uh, sometimes with no talent whatsoever. I've been there. And they have to find ways to innovate and create instantly under that kind of pressure. And so we've got about 10 minutes with you this morning to share with you three tips from that world. To get you started, we're actually going to give you a task. We hope that everyone out there has a pen. So if you have a pen, grab it. And if, you're, if your neighbor has a pen and you don't have one, grab theirs. Here's what we're going to ask you to do. There is in your program a blank piece of paper towards the end of, of, of that program, or there's a scrap piece of paper somewhere in front of you. We'd like you to replicate what you see up there on the screen. What you have here is the first seven capital letters of the English alphabet oriented around this horizontal line. And imagine that that line after the G extends outwards. We're going to give you 75 seconds to have an experience with this. Here's your task. There's, been a, there's a pattern that's been established here, the first seven capital letters of the English alphabet around that line. In a way that makes sense to you, complete the pattern that's been established with the remaining capital letters of the English alphabet, H, I, J, K, et cetera, all the way to Z. Pattern's been established. Complete that pattern in a way that makes sense to you. We're going to do this for 70 seconds. Go. I can see some of you have already found one way to complete that pattern. Find a different way. Yet another way to complete the pattern that was, but that was established up there. Nicely done. Another 20 seconds. If you found two ways to complete that pattern, or if you're still working on the first way, finish up in 20 seconds. They're very studious. They are. Yeah. It's a smart group. We're going to put this on the SAT next year. All right, here's what we'd like you to do. We'd like you at your tables to compare your solutions and see what you came up with at your tables. It's our thesis that you're going to have more than one, perhaps more than three, different solutions to this. So take a few seconds, about 30 seconds, and compare what you came up with at your tables. Go. Okay, we'll ask you to stop there. So how many tables came up with at least three different solutions for that? A lot of you. We don't have time to, to come out into the audience. Here are some potential solutions that you might have come up with. We could put those letters back up on the screen. 
Some people come up with a mathematical solution. So they've got a 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2 sort of system. People saw that solution, I imagine. How many people came up with a visual answer to this puzzle? We've got some out here. Some people find instantly that, of course, all of the, the letters on the bottom are with curved lines, and the letters on top are with straight lines. We were doing this with uh, the MBA program down at University of Oregon, and someone from Asia said, well, it's all about stroke order and stroke count. Other people have said, you know what, pattern, who cares? Just put them all in there. <laughs> Other people have noticed, you know what, that's the alphabet song. It's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so that's the solution. The point that we want to leave you with in this exercise is that noticing more about a given situation can yield more potential solutions. It gives you more to work with. Oftentimes, we see the one way we might look at something, and we stop. It's helpful to have a diversity of thought. And again, as you work this afternoon together, colliding your perspective, whether you're a visual thinker or a mathematical thinker or a sound thinker, can be helpful. Because if everyone's approaching something from the same point of view, you're going to limit your answers. So noticing more is the first practice of improv, actually. And now we want to give you an experience that's more directly tied to the art of improvisation. We're going to demonstrate something up here, and then we're going to have you do it out there in your seats. So as Brad said, there's two other tips from this world of improv. And we use improv with all sorts of different organizations to help them create, relate, communicate better with each other. And this exercise we're, we're going to do now is one that we commonly do. It's an improvised storytelling exercise. We're about to tell you a story that's never been told before. We have no idea what it's going to be. Uh, we're going to make it up as we go. You're going to help us by first giving us the title of this story. And so, uh, sir, what's your name right here in the front row? First name? Bill. Bill. This is Bill, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and Bill, what's one thing you like to do in your free time? Read. He likes to read. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bill. Uh, this title of the story is going to be uh, The Day Bill Stopped Reading. So he's going to tell this story now. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to improvise The Day Bill Stopped Reading. And Brad is going to yell out words that seemingly have nothing to do with the story I'm talking about. My job will be to take these outside things from left field and instantly incorporate them into my story. And we'll see what happens. This has never worked before. Definitely not. <laughs> So here we go, the day Bill stopped reading. It was Saturday, and Bill woke up a bit late. His alarm clock went off, and he went outside to pick up the paper. A cantaloupe. But he tripped over a huge cantaloupe rind that was out in his front yard. You see, the raccoons had gotten into his garbage again, and since Bill doesn't compost... Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. It got all over his wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. And he was furious. He didn't know what to do. He grabbed his paper, and he threw it into the living room. He grabbed some... Some, something to clean up with, and he started to scrub his carpet. Contact lenses. But while he was doing so, boink, both of them at the same time popped out. He couldn't see. As frustrated as he was, he knew he had to read the paper. He was a reader, for goodness sake. Mount Hood. He picked up the paper, and all he could see was a blurry image of Mount Hood. There were some other things below it that might have been words, but he didn't have his contact lenses. He didn't know what was going on. He went over to his neighbor. He knocked on his door. Knee surgery. His neighbor limped over to the door. <laughs> opened it up, and he said, what do you want, Billy? He goes, we'd read me this paper. Now, these guys had had a contentious a relationship back and forth, but this was a special moment. At that moment, Bill realized the value of his neighbor as he started to read to him Sushi. The, the newspaper. They ordered in. <laughs> <laughs> and to the end of, of that day, they became the bestest of friends, and Bill realized that sometimes if you can't read, it can lead to other wonderful things. All right, Gary Hirsch, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It wouldn't be fair for us to monopolize this learning opportunity. So here's what we're going to ask you to do. In a moment, not quite yet, in a moment we're going to ask you to stand up. And you're going to find someone at a different table. And you're going to try this Swedish story dynamic. That's what this is called, a Swedish story. The taller of the two of you will be the word giver. As I, as I gave the words. As you demonstrated. The shorter demonstrated. and better looking of you will be the storyteller. Thank you, Brad. The title of your story is going to be up here on the screen. It is going to be, let's see that slide up there on the screen. Uh, we'll get that title for you in just a second. The, the title will be Bill's 
Thank Billings you for playing along. F exciting first day on the job. We're going to give you about two minutes to try this on, and then we'll, we'll, we'll share with you a couple of thoughts about it. So again, at this moment, stand up. Find someone at a different table. You've got 15 seconds to do that. The taller of you is the word giver, shorter of you, better looking is the storyteller. 20 seconds, got it, go! So we're gonna go over that, that's about a minute and a half. Are they playing? Again, start those stories right now if you haven't already done so. Start, begin. They're doing it. if you want to ask more questions. I think you should. Okay. Do you like how... Thirty more seconds, thirty more seconds for your stories. Find an ending. I wouldn't do it. No? All right, find an ending for those stories. Find an ending, give yourselves a quick hand, a quick hand for your partner. Nice job. Take a seat. Go ahead, have a seat again, please. Have a seat, find your, find your original seat. We've got people shaking hands, we like that. High-fiving. You always, you always see a lot of high-